Hello and welcome to The Kamla Show. We bring you interviews and conversations with technologists, entrepreneurs, filmmakers, and other news from in and around the Bay Area. My guest today is Mannan Mehta. He's an investment banker turned entrepreneur. Welcome to the show, Mannan. Thank you for having us. Unshackled is the name of your should I call it company, seed fund, <laughs> micro VC? What, what, do, what is the term I should use for Unshackled? That's a great question. So Unshackled at the highest perspective is an angel fund. What does that mean? Angel fund is kind of a new term that's being adopted, which replicates what you oftentimes saw at the friends and family level. So we are coming in before any other institutional investor will come in. So we're the first money in, therefore we're an angel. Okay, not a micro VC. No, not a micro VC. So, to the uninitiated like me, explain <laughs> what is the difference between micro VC and an angel fund? So, I think oftentimes when you look at an angel fund, just by the name itself, it really talks more about an individual supporting an entrepreneur before they have any traction per se in the market. What you've seen is angel investors, friends and family folks who are oftentimes thought of as angels as well, are investing in founder potential. Whereas when you get to a micro VC, they're now looking for metrics. They're looking for traction, looking for data on where the company's gotten. So we are predating their involvement. Mm, interesting, the, the way you've differentiated. What does Unshackle do? So Unshackle, simply put, is a hybrid between angel fund and employment. Why, as you asked the, the case? The goal is to help immigrant entrepreneurs who are on work visas, work authorized in the US currently, the ability to quit their full-time job and work full-time on their startup with the protection of having a sponsored visa in this country. So you're unshackling them from their H-1B in some way? We're unshackling them from their employers, from their H-1B, to give them the ability to work full-time on their startup. H-1B is the, is the work visa. So if sure. I come in here yep. as a student, I uh, go to school, and then when I graduate, I get a work visa, and, that is, and then that, that's attached to a company. Yeah, so... There's two actually types of visas. So graduates of universities first go on something called OPT, hmm. optional practical training. It can range from 12 months to 29 months, depending on what major you graduated with. Yeah, if you're a science major, I think you, you get 29 advantage. months, yeah. exactly right. H-1B is an employer-specific sponsorship. So that is subject to the lottery system. Hmm. There's 85,000 per year. And obviously, if you get the visa, then you're able to now work at an employer. If you do not get it, then you are vulnerable to be ultimately asked to leave the country. Hmm. How did this idea come up uh, for you to start a company? I mean, it, it seems kind of very obvious because there are more immigrants graduating from school in this country who are probably leaving this country and going back because they don't have the visa. Yeah, yeah so the, the inspiration really came from personal experience. So um, as you mentioned, I was an investment banker, before that an engineer, um, then I became the guy in charge of marketing at a tech company. As that company got acquired by Intel, I left to start my own business. And this was with a co-founder that was on Visa. Never really thinking about the challenges that would uh, really face, we'd face there. But after seven months of working on the startup and my co-founder not being able to quit his full-time job, I recognized there's a bigger problem here and that was an immigrant entrepreneurial challenge. Meaning that there's a ton of people, hundreds of thousands if not millions, in this country that want to start a business but can't. And so for me, having gone through it with my co-founder who was on a visa, I said, look, we could solve this solution, which is the company that we're working on, or I can solve what I think would be a much bigger opportunity, which is how do I give immigrant entrepreneurs the same opportunity for success as a US citizen? Are you the only uh, uh, angel fund uh, company that's doing that? Of what we've done, research on for the last year, we are the only one that's focused on this problem right now. So your target uh, audience or entrepreneurs are immigrants? It's truly an untapped pool of entrepreneurs that no one else is serving. So they're team Nice touch, untapped pool of <laughs> entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's, a team of, it's a team that has at least one co-founder on a visa. Oftentimes what we see is what you see with unshackled founders. So myself, being a US citizen, born and raised in, the, in this country, my co-founder is an H-1B visa holder very common situation where oftentimes these people meet at universities or they meet in their first job and they have a strong alignment and vision. We want to help those teams. So our core focus is teams with at least one immigrant founder. So how did this vision, I mean, so you were working with a, with a, with a startup, right? Yeah. And your, uh, the, the guy who was helping you was on H1 and couldn't really yep. work for you full time. 
how did you decide that this was an idea? Did it just come to you as a vision, or oh, were you mulling over it? I'm just curious. I, I guess, you know, given my personal background, because I've never faced the in immigrant entrepreneurial challenge, it was a process in the, in the making, right? So it was about seven months of legal discoveries, conversation with angel investors. My own father, who's an angel investor, um, was the first person I went to, and I had, a, I had a hard time convincing him to write a check because his identification of the problem was, your co-founder's not full-time. How can I give you that money? And as I negotiated with him saying, hey, Dad, you know what? If you don't fund him, he can't come full-time. And you're saying you won't fund him if he doesn't come full-time. This is Catch-22 situation. So after six months of these, six months, seven months of these conversations, I realized there's got to be a way. And so I started talking to my now co-founder, on Shackled, who's a visa holder himself. And that's when we put our minds together and said, look, we can wait or we can solve it now. How much money have you raised? We raised about $4 million from 63 individual investors. Limited partners? All limited partners. Um, it's a mix between institutional investors, so the likes of First Found Capital, Emerson Collective, Jerry which Yang's, uh, Lorraine Powell Jobs, yes. yep. AME Cloud Ventures, which is Jerry Yang's fund. And then we have about 12 other general partners at larger funds, and the remainder are all individual angels. So you have uh, Brad Feld of Techstars. Brad Feld, Joe Lonsdale. And you have Naval uh, Ravikant, Ravika, yep. the uh, angel list, which is, which is the one which probably disrupted this whole uh, yep. scene in some ways. How do you work with them? If you have 60 limited partners, what do they bring to the table and what do you bring to them? That's a great question. So one of the things that we focused on when we started Unshackled was how do we create a strong network effect? End of the day, you know, there's no IP in the structure we created. Sounds like a line from that unicorn article. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you read that many times? I, I have read it a few times. <laughs> and so what we, what we focused on is how do you bring people that have either seen the problem firsthand, are influencers in the space, or are somebody that can add value to an entrepreneur. So one of the requirements that we had in our fund was we will not take passive investments. A lot of traditional funds take money from anywhere. And anyone will give them money, $100,000, quarter million dollars, millions of dollars. Our whole thing was, if you don't want to give us any of your time, we don't want to take your money right now. So they spend time with you? So it's different ways. So whether it be introductions, whether it be um, a lot of times they're figureheads that can really get us into a certain place that we never would have gotten to otherwise, or down to the point where they're involved in our selection process. So our LPs get involved from the moment we first meet a founding team all the way to help them create an unfair advantage. So oftentimes, we'll ask our investors, who are the five or six contacts you have in this company's industry to connect them with the right customers and, and clients? That creates the unfair advantage. Everyone's smart enough. Which you recognize. Which you recognize. We, we've no, been you fortunate. specifically recognize because you grew up here. You're a Silicon Valley baby. Yep. <laughs> All right? I've, I've been very fortunate um, to have a very strong background where my parents have been super connectors. And I saw the value of a network. And so we want to give the founding teams that we invest in that same access mm. because we know they're all smart enough. Everyone here is, especially if they've come from abroad, have had a fight tooth and nail to get to this country. Once they get here, what makes a difference is do they have access? Do they have network access? If Unshackle can bring that, we will create that unfair advantage. Mm. So explain, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm on H1, how can I work with Unshackle? What will get me, what will get my foot into your door and an audience and it's, hopefully you know the money yeah it's really 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 simple so it all starts with our website www.unshackled.co you apply CO, not uh, .co yeah not com you come to our site you fill out the application we'll see it and we'll respond to you within 48 hours oh so that's the only way that's the starting point um, oftentimes people may come through referrals but we'll ask them to then fill out the application so we can understand the business it's a very short application no more than about 15 16 questions uh, mostly focused on the founders and basic questions on the, on the business. From that point on, the two general partners, myself and Nathan, will engage in conversations where we think it's relevant. Beyond that, we go through the selection process where we have an investment committee review and then a work in residence. So really easy to start. Apply online. We'll get back to you right away. And uh, how many... Uh, what shall I call it? Applications? Well, what is the word I how would use? How many teams? How many, yeah, te how many yeah. teams? So the, no. goal, the goal of the next two years is to serve between 18 and 25 teams. Hmm. To date, we've done about two. Um, unfortunately, I can't disclose it for confidentiality reasons, but hopefully in the near future here, I'll be talking about them. 
So, and how, what do you give? Supposing I make it to your list yep. and you like my business plan, how much, what do I get in return from you? So the way it works is Unshackle's investments start at $125,000. Again, that's in the form of payroll. Mm. We get payroll, benefits, working space, all the legal costs are covered. Um, whether it be filing fees, attorney fees. So you're like an accelerator incubator in a way. Yeah, we bring all this together. And we also add the employment piece, which is like a tech company. Um, so what we believe is by investing through payroll, this is the first fund that's truly investing in the founder. It's who we believe in. It's the founding team. So by giving that, we, we give 125K as a starting point, and we take 8% common equity in the company. Hmm. What if the company doesn't uh, succeed? What happens? So we obviously would want to limit that outcome. We, we fundamentally believe that the founders that we're investing in are inherently uh, harder working and, and more passionate. So we feel like we've created an unfair advantage. But in the event that they can't raise capital from any of our investors or their networks, you know, what we will look for is to place them in a situation where they can be successful. Meaning, we will give them at least one month notice and place them into a portfolio company of ours, into one of our investors, or a job that they're looking for. And we'll ensure that they get placed. Mm. The reason I ask that question is because fail fast, fail quickly, iterate. And these are the terms that I use when you yeah. talk about today's lean startup. And so you, you have a situation here where I'm on an H-1B visa and you're uh, paying me, I'm on your payroll. And if my, for some reason, because startups really sometimes fail a lot more than they succeed. Oh, I think in, we want to fail fast. So I guess when, one distinction I would draw is when I talk about that you can't raise funding, that's a different type of failure. That's a failure that generally is prescribed by you are yourself walking away from your business. But if you're going to fail and constantly learn, Unshackle's model allows us to extend the runway of investment for as long as we want. If you remember, it's all by payroll. Mm. So every two weeks, we're cutting a new check. If we want to extend your runway, we can add two, three, four months very easily. As long as we see the right tenacity, the right inspiration, and the, and the work ethic, we want to be there supporting you all the way through your journey until you reach that milestone. Hmm. Who do you turn to for advice? There's a number of people, but it really starts for me personally with my father. Um, I've been, like I, as you've alluded to, I've been very fortunate to have a very strong network. He's an active angel investor, successful um, businessman himself. He retired 15 years ago. Um, so I turn to him very regularly. I also turn to my brother-in-law uh, quite a bit, who's also in finance. And beyond that, we also have a set of advisors at Unshackle that we have brought on and given them equity um, in our stake to ensure that we get their time when we need it. Mm -hmm. So the likes of Pankaj Shah, Jay Hume, Naval Ravikant, we, we can turn to these folks when we need to. Mm. My final question, what is a typical day in your life like oh, after man. you established Unshackled in November, I guess, is when you announced? We publicly launched it in November. Um, of 2014? See, so what my version or my wife's version of it? Who's ever <laughs> version? <laughs> um, well, I mean, generally speaking, the days are about 20 hours long. Um, mostly because we're constantly responding to entrepreneurs. The, the thing about Unshackle is because, because of our model and the stage at which we're investing, we're getting involved at the pitch step, stage. We're getting involved where there's still iterations on the right story to craft. Every company that we invest in becomes a product of Unshackle. So you're, you're, you're molding the baby. We, we will do whatever the founders need us to do. Um, it's a full service model. We don't want to be considered parents because that's not the relationship we want to have with our founders. We want to be in the trenches with them. Um, so oftentimes my days are engaging with a lot of founders, setting up a lot of investor meetings to ensure that we have the right connections when the founders come in. So it's um, a lot of brass tactics, uh, very much involved with the founders and their needs. And whatever they need, we'll do. Hmm. How many, uh, you said 300? Uh, business plans that, or, or yeah. people that you have seen? Business plans. In a day, how many do you see? On average, we get about seven to 10 per day. Um, and initially, when we first launched in November, it was about 50 or 40 or 50 a month, uh, a day. But the point is, is that now we're getting highly vetted deals. So a lot of our deals are coming through our investors, which the quality is astonishing. It's, it's, it's humbling to be where I am now, to know how much talent there is that we get to serve. Where are you going to be two years from now? Two years from now, we want to do a couple of things. One, we want to see a another fund behind this. We want to be able to invest in every single one of our companies that graduate from Unshackled. Right now, we have a core fund focused at this stage, but when they graduate, how do we continue our investment of support? That's number one. Number two, we want to see Unshackled not only in Silicon Valley, but also in New York, Boston, Seattle, Austin, Chicago, LA. We believe where other entrepreneurs are going, we need to be there. Well, we wish you all the best, Manan, and thank you so much for stopping thank you so by. Much.
And thank you for watching. And you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Kamla Mannan. You are at Mannan M. Yep. And you can watch, if you've missed any of our interviews, you can watch them on YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.